Hey, welcome to the Master Tech Lou channel. I am Lou, and today I'm reviewing the King Bolin BF200 Brake Fluid Tester. You're asking yourself, why do I care about a brake fluid tester? Well, if you're the do-it-yourselfer at home and you're only working on your own car, I don't think this is for you. This is for shops. I think it's more so for shops and service personnel that work on multiple cars throughout the week, right? So, or maybe uh, maybe you like to race your car, but I don't know, so, so let me explain. So, brake fluid is hydroscopic. Um, I'll have to check to make sure I said that right. Hydroscopic, what it does is it absorbs moisture, right? So the system is sealed for the most part, but it can breathe just a little bit and you can get moisture in the system, right? So if you look at brake fluid, it changes color and gets dirty and green and, and nasty, black and gooey. So brake fluid has a lifespan that most people don't even realize. For some reason, a lot of manufacturers don't suggest brake fluid flushes or changes or fluid exchanges, but it gives it a life of two to three years max, depending on the fluid that you're using. So uh, old style fluid is dot three, then they went to a dot four, then a dot four plus, and now a dot 5.1 full synthetic. And then you can also get uh, racing brake fluids that have a higher boiling point. So the best way I can explain it is if you've ever tried to stop your car and the pedal feels spongy, like there's air in the system. If you ever had air in the system or your the pedal travels further than it needs to to stop, you know, it doesn't feel nice and firm. Fluid has a lot to do with that. Fluid and the breakdown of the rubber lines that give it that much more uh, room for the fluid to go because you can't compress fluid. So when you're pressing the brake and it's sinking a little bit more than it should, it's because there's air in the system or there's moisture in the system and the fluid's boiling. When the fluid gets hot, it boils, right? So what this does is it has an electrode. Let me open it up. Okay. So it's got an electrode. And what it's going to do is it's going to test, it's going to test the moisture content of the fluid. So ideally, if you look at a fluid, you're going to tell it's bad. You're gonna you're gonna tell it's disgusting and bad. I got a couple cars here in the shop I can show you, and we'll see the difference between clean fluid and, and bad fluid. But this is a good indication to show customers, right? So like if you're gonna tell them that hey, we recommend changing your brake fluid, and they go, I don't need that. Nobody nobody thinks or or wants to need anything with their car, right? That's just the way of life. Like so you got you got to show them or prove to them, hey, we have this tester and it shows the percentage of moisture in the system. And it shouldn't be moisture in there, so we got to flush the fluid. So I've been working for Mercedes-Benz for 20 years, give or take. And I will tell you that we do brake fluid flushes every two years with our major maintenance called the B-Service. And if you've driven a car before and after a brake fluid flush, it's it's a noticeable difference, right? So uh, for some reason, a lot of American car manufacturers don't recommend it. I'm not too sure about Asians because I've always stuck with the German cars and worked on American cars. Haven't done too much Asian car brands, but... Um, for some reason, they don't recommend the fluid changes, but two years is the is the running average, uh, not the average, but it's, it's the spec. Every two years, you should change your brake fluid, right? So whether you use the car or not, you know, um, it's just something that it's brakes, it's safety, right? So if you're watching this, you know, and you're, and you're concerned about this, I'm gonna show you how to use it and, and what it's good for. But if you're just happening to cross the video and you're curious about brake fluid, just know that changing your brake fluid is gonna help with the, the feel of the pedal and the effectiveness of the pedal. So let's say you, uh, a good indication is you drive your car and the brakes feel good when you start, but more stop and go driving, the brakes are getting harder and harder to press. The fluid has a lot to do with that. Not only that, but brake fade. So I'm not saying that's gonna fix your issue if you have an issue with brakes, but I'm telling you that fluid is very important to have exchanged or flushed out. And it's very simple to do. This is not what the video is about. It's not about flushing brake fluid. It's about checking the brake fluid with this, but you know, there's there's manual ways of pumping it out and there's uh, vacuums that suck it out or there's pressure bleeders that push it out. A couple different ways. So so just keep in mind that it's it's an important thing to do that not a lot of people think of doing or they think that they don't need that because they've never heard of it before. And people think that, well, you only want this so you can sell service. Uh, yeah, to a point, but now you can prove why you need to sell it, right? That's why something like this is important. So let me go ahead and power it on. I already put a battery in here. It don't come with a battery. So they could have thrown a battery. They did not. All right. So on the screen, it's very simple. Uh, you pick the fluid that you're testing. All right. And then you stick the electrode in there. 
and it tells you the percentage of moisture that's in there, if it's, if it's okay or not. And on the bottom, there's an actual light that you can turn on, all right, as if you can't see the hole, <laughs> but, uh, and then the screen brightness. So very simple to use, right? So in fact, we'll just do this right now. All right, so here's my Dodge Grand Caravan, my personal car. Yep, that's what Mercedes-Benz text drive is. Nothing that's Mercedes, right? So you look in there at the fluid, and it's got a tint to it, right? Now, I just did brakes. I just don't remember if I flushed my actual fluid myself, so we're going to go ahead and check it. I, I'm pretty sure I did. I'm almost certain that I did, but the, the reservoir can get dirty and nasty too, right? So what we used to do in the shop on the older cars that was easier, we pop the reservoir out, clean it out, and then put it back in. So all we're going to do, now that I know that I have dot three, all the caps tell you, Okay, now you can put dot four and dot three, but you can't put dot three and dot five. You can go up, but you can't go down. All right, so keep that in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and set the menu to dot three. All right, I'm going to take the electrode and here, let me put my camera back in the mount here. Turn it down. All right, so all you do is submerge it into the fluid and it reads a reading. I am between, I'm at 1%, so I'm okay, all right? Now I know I just flushed this fluid. All right, now I don't even know if you can see that. Let me take this out. But when I put it in there, it shows it, okay? I got it in the fluid. Easy as that, that's all you do, shove it in there, right? So now I have this Mercedes over here that I know I did not flush the brake fluid on, and we'll go check that one. All right, so here's the Mercedes ones. On here, we use dot four plus. All right, look at that. That is disgusting and green. Look at that guy. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull the screen out and the cap. All right, let me show you the color of this. Look at that, it's just, it's, fluid should be clear, like see-through, look at that, All right? This thing probably hasn't been changed in forever. So, I'm gonna get the tester out. All right, I got on dot three, change it to dot four. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and submerge it. And wow, it's only showing near uh, near 3%, All right? So now the color of the fluid, what that can come from is the uh, brake lines. So the color of the fluid can come from the rubber in the system, from what we understand. I'm not in there to see, right? That's just what we were experienced through, and that, that can be why the color can change. Um, is the uh, There's rubber in the master cylinder, and there's four rubber lines at least at each wheel, right? And then there might be multiple rubber lines. You got an ABS unit that's fluctuating the brakes, and there's probably seals and stuff inside of there. So the color can, change can, can uh, come from multiple reasons but we just understand that it's from rubber in the system but um it shows you there the uh the percentage right so let's see if i just did a test like this i'm going to check a brand new bottle well not brand new it's been open but uh i'm going to check a new bottle a brake fluid to see what it shows with dot four in there all right yep i'm submerged into brand new fluid and we got zero Zero, no reading on there. I think I'm only touching the bottom of the can when it starts to read. But yeah, so there's definite, uh, I think it just reads the resistance of the fluid. And the less resistance means the more moisture in there, which is kind of tricky, but uh, there you go, there you have it. So to show you that it's checking for moisture, I have a cup of straight water. And watch what happens when I put it in the water. That's it, so it is checking for moisture and the resistance through the moisture. With straight water, you got very little resistance, so it's going right to the beep. All right, so that's what it's checking for. So I got a dot four, and put it in there, and let me go to dot five. Dot five, it's not good enough, okay? Dot three, it's still good. Dot four, it's still good. Dot five, it's not. So it's got a different measurement that it's looking for in there, all right? And I think it's more so the system so like in dot five is for higher temperature systems. Like I just did a Ferrari. I just did a Ferrari for a pre-track inspection. And um, 
that needed dot 5.1. So 5.1 is extreme high boiling points. I think you would want way less moisture in there if you're racing a car, right? So it's a little bit more picky on the measurement. So, but as far as a uh, a review, it I, it's like you know, I mean, you see it, right? Like it's it's a useful tool to help show the customer or yourself if it's time to change it or not, right? So this thing's only a few bucks. You can find it on Amazon. I got the link below. There's a discount code that the uh, the sellers give me. I don't get paid for these uh, reviews. It's I might even call it a promotion. It's a review. Um, companies find my YouTube reviews and they say, hey, we like your reviews. We'd like you to review our product. So that's where I get it from. So they send me the product free of charge. So I don't have to give a good review and then get the product. Um, I don't have anything bad to say about this thing. You know, it, uh, it does the job. So, hey, hit the like, hit the subscribe, check out my other reviews. You guys take care. Thanks.